Hi, I'm Colton Kelly and welcome to the Sportfish Spring Spectacular. Today we're going to go through some tactics in early season sea trout fishing to help you approach those cooler spring nights. So let's head into the lodge and let's have a look at some of the tackle that we're going to be using. According to our investigators... When night fishing for sea trout, I tend to use a 9 foot 6 7 weight rod or a 9 foot 6 8 weight rod. I use the eight weight for my tubes, Waddingtons and larger single flies and the seven weight I tend to use for my surface lures. When night fishing for sea trout you don't necessarily need a specific rod. You could use any six, seven, eight weight rod you've got lying around that you use for the reservoirs or uh, you use for all types of fishing. So if you dip in your toe in for the very first time, there's no need whatsoever to go out and buy new gear to try it out. So when you're fishing for early season sea trout, you want a reel with a solid drag system on it because the early fish, they normally come up big your April and your Mayfish. So you want to have as much control over them as possible. The lines we use throughout the whole season are normally an intermediate line and a floating line. It doesn't matter what brand of lines you use, it's what you feel comfortable with and what you've got. Here I have got a Cortland Blue intermediate set up on one reel and a Cortland Peach floating line. I find these lines work really well with the rods I've got. So moving on to the tippet, I use 15 pound fluorocarbon Seager at night. It doesn't really matter what uh, leader you use, uh, as long as it's something that you feel most confident fishing, that's, that is the main thing. With night fishing early season, I would recommend using just a point fly, not a dropper. So many things can go wrong, such as a snag, or when you're playing one of them bigger fish, he could wrap you around one of the corners of the river and get tangled up and that fish will be gone. So once again, recommend just using a point fly. So moving on to fly choice and patterns. This is a sewing stort. Lovely black and silver fly, very simple with some jungle cock eyes. Very effective for night fishing. Keeping it simple is always the best way. This is a Sue and Stort variant. It's got a turbo green head on it. This can be a great attractor for night fishing and the fish can see it from a while off. This is something a bit different. It's a smaller tube with a red head and teal. Teal works really well. Coming away from the tubes, this is a single fly. Um, and this just pulsates in the water as you're swinging it across the river and it works really, really effectively. So if all else fails, this is a secret weapon. It has a trailing treble hook at the back. It gives you the best opportunity if the fish come up short. When it comes to night torches, do not buy cheap. You want something reliable and make sure it's fully charged before you go out. I always keep a spare one on my bag in case anything happens with this. And this one actually has a red light setting on it. So if you want to undo a tangle or change a fly, you can make your way to the side of the river. You don't have to get out. Put the red light setting on and you will not disturb the fish. So lastly, the temperatures really drop early season while night fishing. So I know it seems obvious, but make sure you've got some warm clothing with you and a hot drink. So the first pool we've brought you to is Junction Pool, where the Taui meets the Kothi. They both have different characteristics. The Taui is a lot of a larger river, and the Kothi a lot of a smaller river. This covers both types of fishing you might be doing on your home waters. So if you're going night fishing for the first time on a beach you haven't fished before, make sure you're going with someone experienced or a local guide. One, because they know the wading lines, and secondly, because they know where the fish will be lying. The two parts of this pool that I would really target, the same as any other pool, would be the head and the tail. 
So I'm just going to walk in and show you some of the angles that I would cast at. So when I approach a pool at night, what I would do is just fish a short line, pretty much square, the first couple of casts. So I may be one rod length in front of me, maybe two, and then I just keep up with the line. I don't figure out of retrieve it, I just make sure there's no slack as the current brings it round. The first cast I would fish square, and then I would move more towards a 45 angle, each one down. So the next one, a slightly more of an angle. And once again, I just keep up with the line, letting the current bring it round, not retrieving, just making sure no slack. After I'm happy fishing them two casts or three casts short, then I would put a bit more line out. and fish another rod length away from me and once again fish slow. So I've just fished that coming down keeping up with the line. If you're happy doing two or three more casts doing so changing the angle then I would start it all over again with a longer cast. What I would do then is just speed up the retrieve with a fast figure of eight stop maybe with a slow figure of eight then mix it up fast whatever you feel comfortable doing as i'm working my way down the pool i would change the angles all the way down fishing a short line a long line a short line a long line slowing the fly down speeding the line up varying the retrieve just mixing it up completely to cover all aspects so I mentioned at the start of really taking the time to fish the head of the pool and the tail of the pool. Of course, fish the whole pool, but you really want to concentrate on them areas where you think the fish are going to be lying. Early season fish tend to run hard. They don't normally stop and hold in place here. They want to make their way up the river. So more often than not, you'll catch them in places that you won't catch sea trout mid-season where they'll be holding. So always fish the faster runs and some of the areas that you wouldn't necessarily be fishing in peak summer because often than not, you will catch them bigger fish there. I'm happy I fished all aspects of the head of the pool. I've waded down safely as far as I can go. I'm going to make my last cast and then head back out and start fishing the tail end of the pool. We've just fished the head of Junction Pool. I've just crossed the coffee. And now we're going to focus on the tail end of Junction Pool on the main river, the Tawi. We're going to wade down as far as we can safely and try and cover as much water here as possible. Then we're going to go up to one of the smaller pools on the Cothy and give that a go. So similar to the head of the pool we are shown earlier, you want to be fishing short casts to start off and then you put out more line, more line as you keep going to work your way down to cover as much of the pool as physically possible. After you're happy covering as much of the pool using a float in line, I would then go out and potentially put on a sink tip and fish the pool a lot slower. So I would have more of an angle on my cast and I would do minimum retrieve. So try and really get that fly put there in front of their noses. Sometimes I would even put a mend or two in the line to really keep it in the hot spots where you think the fish potentially will be laying or having a rest after a bit of hard running up up river and that's really fishing now slow that other end just hold in there exactly where you want it so here we are the last pool on the coffee it really is a perfect sea trout pool you've got narrow deep on the left bank a lot of tree coverage and oxygenated all the way down the pool this is one of the perfect pools for sea trout. I'm going to start at the head of the pool with a short line and fish it all the way down to the tail. 
So, first of all, I want to fish the fly quite quick across here. So, I cast more square, and it's a fast pull anyway, so I wouldn't want to do any retrieve. I just want to keep in touch with the line. When I'm happy that I've covered that area, I'd want to slow down the fly. So once again, I would put more of an angle on the cast and put in a mend straight away and just hold it slightly out. And I would do that once or twice. Maybe the second or third cast while doing that. I might put another mend in right at the very end just to hold it there and when I'm happy I've covered that area I'll take a couple of steps down the pool and once again a square a cast and just keep in touch with the line letting it come quick right at the end of the swing I'll give it a quick figure of eight just to entice anything following it one more on a slightly bigger angle. Once again, fish it to keep in touch with the line. At the last stage of the swing, just a quick figure of eight to finish it off. And then going back into slowing the fly down to cover everything. When I'm fishing a pool like this, what I tend to do is fish a slightly smaller fly, but heavier. So your fly is fishing straight away in the depth and the area that you want it to. So one of the great things about fishing rivers like this, you only need to cast a rod length away and you can really cover all the water. So in these bits of water here, they could be double figure sea trout running all throughout the season. Gives you a massive chance of catching. So we come into a potential hot spot. There's a tree that's half in the river and that's normally a good holding spot for fish because they feel secure. So I'm gonna target this area now. So if you're thinking about going out sea trout fishing at night, these are my three top tips to try and help your time on the water and make it as successful as possible. One is keep an eye on the moon cycle. Full moon is never a good night for sea trout fishing. Never has been. You want the dark, cloudy and warm nights. You'll find them pools becoming incredibly active at that time. Secondly, fog. When the water temperature is hotter than the air temperature, it creates a layer of fog. And essentially, that prevents the fish seeing the silhouettes of the fly, and it acts very much like dirty colored water. So it's no good for night fishing at all. Thirdly, fishing at dusk. Fishing at dusk can be an incredible effective way to catch two in. The tail end of pools with small doubles, or any small flies in that matter, fish them quick, swing them quick, and it can produce some really good fish before you head into a night session. So we've come to the end of the pool now and the end of the session. Uh, if you're thinking about going out night fishing for sea trout, I hope this video would have helped you in some way. We really are lucky to have sea trout or sewing, what we call them in Wales, here in our country to fish for. They're one of the strongest, one of the most freshest, and one of the most hardest fish to catch on the fly. But when it all comes together, you really can't beat it. Tight lines, and hope to see you on the water sometime.